starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Cash Matlock. We begin tonight with the threat for severe weather tomorrow. Strong tornadoes, damaging winds, hail and heavy rain are all possible. Let's go ahead and send things right over to meteorologist Trevor Burchett for the latest details. Hey there, Cash. Yep, you're exactly right. Unfortunately, we are still expecting that severe weather outbreak through the day tomorrow. I wish I had better news for your Easter Sunday, but it is looking more and more likely that we are going to have to contend with some severe weather through the day tomorrow. So here's what we're expecting. Uh, definitely some severe weather likely in the way of damaging winds, hail and heavy rain. Unfortunately, we can't rule out some tornadoes and some of those could be on the violent side and be those long track tornadoes that travel for uh, 20 to 30 miles at a time. Generally, the timing for the worst of the weather is anytime from lunchtime tomorrow on closer to 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. But you are going to wake up to rain in the morning. That just won't be when the worst of it is going to come. So now is a great time to figure out what your tornado safe place is where you are. Remember, the best place to be is your tornado shelter, a safe room, or a basement. A decent place to be is on the lowest floor of your home. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible and stay away from windows. Where you do not want to be is open rooms, manufactured housing like a mobile home, or in your car. Of course, I'll have the full details on what exactly you can expect coming up in just a little bit. Cash. All right, thanks, Trevor. Lowndes County shelters will be open tomorrow for anyone seeking refuge from the severe weather. EMA Director Cindy Lawrence says Caledonia Elementary, New Hope High School, and the Career Technical School on Lindbergh will all be open by at least 2 p.m. Lawrence says shelters will try to comply with CDC guidelines. Everyone is strongly encouraged to wear a mask when coming to the shelter. If you do not have a mask, one will be provided for you. There will also be hand sanitizer at all three locations. Now, I want to warn you, there will be no way to charge your cell phones once inside the shelter, so please charge all phones or technical devices the night before. Mississippi State women's basketball officially has a new head coach. Sports anchor Courtney Robb joins us in the studio with full details. Courtney. Cash Hale State Hoops makes it official. Nikki McCray Penson is the newest head coach of Mississippi State women's basketball. MSU Athletics making the official announcement on Twitter this morning. McCray Penson comes to Starkville, finishing this past season as the 2020 CUSA Conference Coach of the Year, replacing former eight year head coach Vic Schaefer. The new woman in charge also has quite the resume. Here's a better look. McCray Penson served as an assistant coach under South Carolina's Don Staley for 10 years. Her experience in the SEC goes well beyond that. Playing for Tennessee and Pat Summit, becoming a two-time SEC Player of the Year, McCray eventually moved on to sit on five different rosters in the WNBA, becoming a three-time All-Star. And to cap it all off, was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2012. McCray Penson will have her introductory press conference on Zoom for members of the media at noon central on Monday. Thanks, Courtney. A man has turned himself into Louisville police after his alleged involvement in a Friday night shooting. Uh, officers say, or police say, 40 year old Michael D. Jones from Gulfport, Mississippi turned himself into police around 1 30 this afternoon. Officers say Jones allegedly shot 23 year old Texas native Malik Hudson in the parking lot of Ivy Apartments on Friday around 9 p.m. Police say the victim was driving his car trying to exit the parking lot. After being shot, his car ran off the right side of the road and hit a light pole. Jones then allegedly fled the scene. Now, Hudson was transported to Winston Medical Center, where he was then airlifted to University Medical Center in Jackson for gunshot wounds to the head and back. Hudson died in the hospital around 2 p.m. today. Officers say the suspect, Michael Jones, is currently under probation with the Mississippi Department of Corrections for felony DUI. Jones has been charged with murder. We'll have more details on this case as they become available. Well, the newest numbers show another triple-digit growth in Mississippi COVID-19 cases. Today's update shows 173 new positives as of 6 p.m. Friday night. That pushes the total number of cases to more than 2,600. The death toll is also climbing with 11 new fatalities from the virus. For a full breakdown of counties, visit our website at WCBI.com. The U.S. has more than half a million confirmed coronavirus cases, with at least 20,000 deaths so far. In New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio says the nation's largest school system will remain closed for the rest of the school year. But Governor Andrew Cuomo says no decision has been made and it's not the mayor's call to make a loan. CBS News correspondent Michael George has the latest from New York. It's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. 
President Trump faces a difficult question. Restart the nation's economy or face the prospect of acting too fast and risking lives. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said Saturday he's keeping the school system that serves more than a million students closed for the rest of the school year. The worst mistake we could make is to take our foot off the gas and end up in a situation where this disease had a resurgence and threatened us even more. The mayor has an opinion in New York City. Governor Andrew Cuomo fired back saying no decision has been made. Cuomo says while New Yorkers continue to become infected with the coronavirus, the rate of hospitalization is flattening. But Friday brought another day of close to 800 deaths in the nation's hardest hit state. Incredible loss and pain. The numbers are rising around most parts of the country, including Florida. People have not created that, that conscious, like, let's keep distance. Many shoppers in Sacramento, California, followed new CDC recommendations. And for some, the advice of loved ones to wear cloth masks in public. My mom told me I needed to wear a mask, so I went and there was none anywhere, so I had to get creative. In Texas, Houston's mayor urged people to celebrate Easter at home. You can walk into a church feeling fine, sit next to some people, embrace them, hug them, shake their hands, and now you have infected four, five, six, eight other people. On Sunday, countless congregations will be bringing services to the masses online as they pray for a better tomorrow. Michael George, CBS News. The White House issued a statement responding to a New York Times story saying President Trump had earlier warnings about the dangers of the coronavirus. The statement said in part, quote, while the media and Democrats refused to seriously acknowledge this virus in January and February, President Trump took bold action to protect Americans and unleash the full power of the federal government to curb the spread of the virus, expand testing capacities, and expedite vaccine development when we had no true idea the level of transmission or asymptomatic spread, end quote. Well, the number of deaths due to COVID-19 broken down by race is shocking. As it continues to rip through the nation, African American communities have been infected and killed at a disproportionate rate right here in Mississippi. Our DeAndrea Turner has more on the story. Streets empty, businesses close, as the people in Oxford, like many others across the country, continue to stay home. But for those deemed essential workers, like Latasha Burton, staying at home is not an option, and it's scary. I'm the breadwinner. I have to be the one that, you know, take the risk. Because if I don't, you know, I won't be able to feed my children. Data from the Mississippi Department of Health shows that the coronavirus is disproportionately killing the black community with over 70% of deaths. African Americans only make up less than 40% of the state's population. We're also seeing uh, more than 50% of the deaths occurring in African Americans. This is troubling, obviously. If history is our teacher, then the most vulnerable continues to bear the brunt of this virus. But the, the fact that we don't have equal access to these services, we don't have equal access to affordable um, uh, care, we, you know, we don't have, we don't get the same response when we walk into a doctor's office or an emergency room that white people do. Um, it explains the reason that we are, are sicker overall and that we are sicker in this particular case with this virus. He believes the only way things will change is to include the ones who are affected in the decision making. Um, you know, it's not just about whether you have an MD or a PhD. It's about whether you really understand what the problems are. And I think the people who best understand what the problems are are people who are grappling with them. People like Burton are still going to work. She wears protective gear like this every day as she faces the uncertainty of the virus just to provide for her family. Us to have to go out here every day and the not knowing is Researchers also point to the number of minorities who are working essential jobs in grocery stores and fast food restaurants as aides in health care and janitorial services. Their point of contact with members of the community may be higher and more hazardous. Well, it's been over a week since Governor Tate Reeves issued a shelter-in-place order. For many Mississippians, the struggle to stay entertained has begun. COVID-19 has many people stuck inside of their homes. Streaming services and social media has played a role in helping people, but many people are finding new hobbies and discovering new things to do. One thing I've been trying to do is uh, expand my hobbies. Uh, 
I've actually been getting into painting, actually. I didn't know I had a, a thing for that, but I really been enjoying painting, actually. Uh, and also, I've been trying to read books and stay active. Social media has played a great role in bringing people together. With social distancing, keeping people apart. Um, we've been using social media as a form of communication and also uh, convening with one another. Uh, we've been doing that with all the social media challenges, TikTok videos, and uh, tweets and things of that nature. On a more serious note here, for anyone that is struggling through this difficult time, there are virtual counseling services. For more information on those services, you can visit our website at WCBI.com. Well, what started out as a way to pass the time is now a way to make a quick dime. More on two young entrepreneurs when we come back. Back, everyone. If you plan to make a trip to the grocery or drugstore, the CDC recommends wearing a face mask. For two local girls, what was once a way to pass the time is now a quick way to make a dime. Our Savannah Gato has more on the story. Medical masks are in short supply, and sewing groups are helping by making cloth masks and donating them to health care workers. For our pair sisters, sewing masks started as a project and is quickly turning into a kitchen table business. Since the coronavirus has been going on, I've been trying to help the community a little bit by giving away some masks to some citizens and also selling masks for money to get my supplies together. Kirsten and Kaylee Burnett spend part of each day at the sewing machine. This is the result. Mass measured, cut, and sewn from scratch. Well, my part of um, the whole thing that we're doing is I basically had to like put together all the stuff, um, lay it out, and just build it up so she can sew it. And we're trying to help the community by doing this. They use a variety of fabrics and patterns so anyone can wear them at any time. The sisters are also helping small businesses by buying fabric locally. I think it's helpful to, like, since the social distancing, so some people don't, like, want to do it, uh, as you can tell, but I think the mask will actually help, like, keep all of their germs to themselves. So. During this pandemic, the duo is happy to help in any way they can. Um, when usually when everybody, like, calls us, they'll, we'll either meet them places or, um, They'll come to our house, like if we know them like that, or we'll just ship them to them. A mask takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Then Kirsten and Kaylee are on to the next one. Right now, the money they make is going back into their business, helping with fabric costs. Well, as you make your severe weather plans today, we invite you to download the free WCBI News app for Apple and Android. There you can get the latest forecast. You can watch our live coverage in the event we have a tornado warning. And you'll also get a weather alert sent right to your phone, a customized alert, if an alert is issued for your area. And I'll tell you exactly what we can expect from tomorrow's severe weather coming up right after this. Stay with us. Just a few high clouds out there today, but otherwise mostly sunny. A little bit cooler, though. A really nice end to the day right now on the Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Looking off to the north here in Columbus at the Lowndes County Courthouse uh, over downtown. A really nice night, and uh, temperatures cooling down just a little bit, though. We're down to 71 at the Air Force Base, 70 now in Starkville. Already down into the 60s off to the north in Tupelo and Oxford. Unfortunately, I wish I had better news, but this nice weather is really not going to stick around too much longer. Overnight tonight, especially by midnight, we're going to see some areas of rain moving through and some rumbles of thunder certainly possible. Now, this is not what we're worried about, so I don't want you to go to sleep worried tonight. The severe weather is not going to be until tomorrow, but don't be surprised if you wake up early uh, on your Sunday morning and you hear a couple of rumbles of thunder as you wake up. That is not anything to be worried about. Please go ahead and get yourself a good night's sleep because we are in for a long day tomorrow. We will see thunderstorms develop into the morning uh, with temperatures starting off right there around 60. Better chances for severe weather come in afternoon and closer to sunset. So that 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. time frame is when we're expecting the worst of the severe weather. But we are going to have one round of storms as we start off the day. So again, a level four risk in effect for just about the entire WCBI viewing area. Just a few of us are in that level three, but I don't want you to get too caught up on that because I'll tell you this. 
I would not be surprised to see this upgraded by the time we get to tomorrow morning. It's very rare that we see a level five, but I wouldn't be shocked. And if we are upgraded to a level five, everybody's going to be in that level four anyway. So the threats are going to remain the same. Don't get caught up if you're in the orange or the red. At this point, it doesn't matter because everybody is going to experience the same threats. We have upgraded our severe weather risk, a high chance for tornadoes. Some of those could be on the strong, violent side. And any tornadoes that do touch the ground will be on the ground for a long time. A very high extreme risk for damaging winds, wind gusts possibly upwards of 80 miles an hour. Also a risk uh, for some large hail and flash flooding as these storms roll through. So let me walk you through this on Futurecast. Starting off midnight tonight, again, a few showers, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder out there. Again, that's not what we're concerned about. I think by early morning, any rain and storm activity will start to move out of here, leaving us a little bit drier as we wake up tomorrow. But we will see some more showers and storms start to roll in here by early Sunday morning. Again, don't think this is what we have to be concerned about. And even this, we're going to have a batch of showers move through here before lunchtime. We're not too concerned about this either. Maybe some gusty winds or some small hail in this. Uh, but the real stuff that we're concerned about is going to come in here after lunchtime. This is 1 p.m. tomorrow, and you see these isolated cells popping up. These are going to be super cells, and this is what would produce tornadoes if these do uh, decide to pop up. You see one cell indicated there over Pontotoc County, and then we've got a couple of cells indicated along and south of Highway 82. Now, there's no way to tell exactly where these are going to form, but the fact that Futurecast is indicating some of these storms popping up is certainly a concern, as those storms would be the ones to produce tornadoes if they do pop up. We get a little bit of a break as we get closer to the five or six o'clock hour. Some more storms certainly possible. And then we're going to have one more round of showers and storms to contend with as we get into the overnight hours, 11 o'clock into 12 o'clock early Monday morning. I do think most of Monday is going to be dry. Now, this is a storm spin potential where you see the brighter colors. That's uh, the atmosphere is basically primed for storms to start to rotate. And you see plenty of energy in, in, up in the atmosphere. Just wanted to show you this to show you that basically all the ingredients are there, it checks off all the boxes. So severe weather, certainly likely tornadoes are possible. Uh, damaging winds and hail, certainly a big concern with this system as well. The good news is after that, we are mostly dry next week. Temperatures a lot cooler down into the 60s with a mix of sun and clouds. Coming up, we check back in with a local meadery that's developing their own hand sanitizer. Stay with us. Welcome back. Last weekend, we told you about a Tupelo winemaker who's converting her business to produce hand sanitizer to battle the coronavirus. WCBI's Chad Groening reports that the production is in full swing and business is booming. The Still at Queens Reward Meadery on McCullough Boulevard is up and running, producing alcohol at a high enough temperature required for hand sanitizer. It goes through the process, winding through the pipes and coming out here. Owner Jerry Carter says there has been a high demand. Well, we knew there was a need, but we did not realize the extent of the need until we got up and running. We have had, I mean, our phone has been ringing off the hook, and that is not an exaggeration. Carter says once the four to five hour distilling process is finished, she has a couple of other ingredients. We add hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of glycerin just to keep it from drying your hands out too bad. And so it's just real simple. It doesn't smell fancy. It's just, just the basic recipe. Once she has the proper blend, it is time to put the new hand sanitizer in plastic bottles for sale. Carter's been able to call back two of her employees who had been laid off. Chris Wells has been working here since October. I think it's amazing, you know, the fact that they went to the trouble of finding the steel and you know, the expense of finding the steel and getting it up and running and figuring out the best way to make everything um, and package it. It's it's been it's been a process, but I think it's amazing, and you know, I love it. I'm glad to be out of my house actually doing something. Hannah Blankenship is a Sotelo school teacher who has worked for Queens Reward Meadery as a second job for more than a year. With classes canceled, she can put in more time here. I kind of do it for fun because it's a really fun job to have. Um, it's just got a really good family environment. Um, with all of this that's gone on, they've been really great with calling us in. And I know I was sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. Um, so it's really nice to have something to do. If I was a teacher right now, I wouldn't be getting all these hours in. So it's really nice to have that off and then have something else to do. After the hand sanitizer has been completely processed and bottled, this is what you will purchase when you come here to the Queen's Reward Meadery, an eight ounce bottle of hand sanitizer that should last you a good long while. 
and Carter says they intend to make the hand sanitizer for the foreseeable future. Uh, hopefully it won't be the main business, which is what it is right now, because I'm ready for all this to go away just like everybody else is, but um, we'll make it as long as people need it. We're happy to keep making it. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Tupelo. Well, Queen's Reward Meadery is selling an 8-ounce bottle of hand sanitizer for $8. But if you can provide your own container, they sell it for $0.75 cents an ounce, which will save you $2 on every 8 ounces you purchase. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Trevor will have the final look at weather. Unfortunately, severe weather does remain likely tomorrow. Hail and wind, a major concern. Also, we are concerned about the chance of tornadoes, some of which could be violent and long track anytime afternoon into lunchtime. So make your severe weather plan now and be sure you know where your safe place is. Fortunately, for the rest of the week, we dry out and cool down. All right, thanks, Trevor. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back here at 10.